Thank you, Erin, and thank you, everybody, for being here today. I hope that when you, by the time you've left here today that you will have a, a, a brand new hobby called stamp collecting. So let's talk about stamp collecting and what it is. Well, uh, what do you need to start a stamp collection, first of all? What do you think you need to start a stamp collection? I heard it. I heard it. Stamps. Yeah, that's, that's very good. You need stamps. Okay. Now, there's a T that comes in the word stamps. There's a T that comes next. Can anybody think of what, what you might need that belongs with a letter T? There you go. You've got it right in your hands. It's stamp tongs. Stamp tongs. So that's what this is, and that's what you see on this stamp right here. The person is holding the stamp with the tongs. And we use tongs just because... Everybody's hands have natural oil that keeps your hands soft and smooth. And if that would transfer onto the stamps over time, it would damage the stamps. So we use these. And if you're a beginner, you don't need to use one of those things because they are a little bit tricky to learn how to, how to work. And they come in all different, there's probably a different kinds in the little container in front of you. Um, so there's one with a pointed edge and a bigger one with a flat tip. And you just figure out which one is the, the easiest for you to work. But since we're all beginners here, or most of us are beginners, you can just use your hands today, and that'll be fine. Okay, now, S-T-A. What do you need to, for stamp collection that begins with the letter A? Al. An album. Excellent. Boy, you guys are smart. You need an album. Now, on this stamp, you'll see an album. It's like a, a loose-leaf a uh, binder with, with, that you put your stamps in, and you can buy albums that have pictures of the stamps so you, it helps you place them properly. Or you can use something like this. It's called a stock book. And I'll show you. This is, this is a little one that I brought from home because I was restricted with how much stuff I could put in my suitcase. And uh, the stamps just slide in behind these little strips of glassine paper, and it holds them like that. And the nice thing about something like this is that you can rearrange the stamps. They're not there permanently. And you can rearrange them, and uh, they stay in there unless you drop them on the floor, and then they go flying. But these are very useful, and they're very, very inexpensive. And you can use them over and over and over again. Okay, so S-T-A, the next letter is M. What do you need for a stamp collection with the, that begins with the letter M? <laughs> that's a great one. <laughs> money is a great one, and that's true. You do need some money. But stamp collecting is actually a very inexpensive hobby. Most stamps are only worth a few cents. You're going to take home some stamps today, and uh, that's a, a great way to start. But the, the end that I'm talking about here is mounts and hinges, and you've got a tray with mounts and hinges. That is what you use to put the stamps in the album or mounts and hinges, and you're going to learn how to do that today. Okay, and the P, which is way down at the bottom here, is publications. And there's a, a table back there that has a, a lot of different kinds of stamp publications, including catalogs that will tell you the value of stamps. So that's what you need. If you can remember the word stamp, then you'll know what it is that, that you need to start a stamp collection. So why should you collect stamps? Well, stamps are really fun. They're pretty. They're colorful. They have everything that you can think of has been put on a stamp. And I mean everything that you can think of. Um, they're going to teach you a lot of really cool things. Now, these are some of my favorite stamps. And I'm going to teach you something very cool about stamps just because of this one. OK, this one is from Hawaii. Hawaii was not always the 50th state in the United States. It used to be a kingdom. And this is the Queen of Hawaii. And this stamp was issued in 1890s. And it is the very first stamp ever issued that has a butterfly on it. She has a butterfly ornament in her hair. So that's a cool thing that you can learn about stamps, from stamps. Um, what else can you learn? You can learn about the people and the places that they live in from all over the world, how they dress. Um, what kind of costumes that they would wear. And the kinds of costumes that they wear are determined by the climate that they live in. You can learn all kinds of things. 
Um, you can learn where, where the countries are because there's map stamps. Look at this one. Rawr. <laughs> Um, there are map stamps. This one is an interesting one. This is a United States stamp that was issued in 1880-something, uh, uh, 1890-something. Um, and it, it's, it's about the Louisiana Purchase. So the Louisiana, oh, it's 1904. Uh, it marked the 100th anniversary of the Louisiana Purchase. So um, you, you can learn a, a lot. This was all, at one time, Louisiana, okay? And it was broken. You can see how it was broken into different states. Um, so we bought the, the Louisiana Purchase. We bought that from France. And who was president? Who was president when that happened in 1803? You said it. I, I saw it. Say Jefferson. Absolutely right. OK. Now, watch what happens here. There's a stamp with Thomas Jefferson on it. He was the third president of the United States, and look, three cent stamp. So you can learn all the presidents, all the way up to uh, Calvin Coolidge, by collecting the presidential stamps that were issued in the, in the 1930s. Uh, uh, the half cent stamp, there was no half president, okay? <laughs> so the half cent stamp is Benjamin Franklin, who was the first postmaster general of the United States. Then you start with Washington. There was no one and a half presidents. So we have Martha Washington in there. And then we have the White House over here for the four and a half cent. But all the other ones, the, the two cent, the three cent is Jefferson, four cent, five cent, correspond to the presidents. So if you want to think about collecting, these are not expensive stamps to collect postally used with a postmark on it. So if you want to collect stamps, maybe that might be a good way to start, is just start collecting those presidents. And then you'll learn all the presidents in the order that they served. Think of how smart you'll be in school just from having fun collecting the stamps. So that presidential series ended in, in, uh, at Calvin Cool with Calvin Coolidge. So then we have other presidents that were issued since then. And um, the presidents, if the president's uh, series con continued, we would be all the way up to, to here. So, um, these are presidents that are not on stamps. Jimmy Carter, George Bush, Clinton, George W. Bush, um, Obama. Why aren't they on a stamp? They're still, alive. they're still alive. They're still alive. So that's why they're not on a stamp. OK, you can collect stamps on letters. C is for covers, which is what the, the envelopes or the outer covering of, of a letter is called. It's, it's called a, a, a cover. Um, and these are some from my own collection. That one way over there, this one right here, is one that I drew myself. And today you're going to get a first day cover uh, from the Simpson stamps as, as a special prize for coming here. And that one I drew myself, and it was for the uh, birthday of Australia in 1988. And so I had um, the, the eagle, the American eagle, with the koala bear from from Australia, and I had them having a birthday party for Australia's uh, 200th birthday. Uh, these are all things from my own collection. These are stamps from Tonga, and they're shaped like bananas. You peel them off, and you put them on the envelope. And these are pineapples. So you can have lots of fun. This one, I really like this one because it's from uh, 1895, and it's an advertisement on the, on the envelope for a publishing company. So I thought that one was really pretty, and, and uh, I collect things like that because it connects me with history. This is one that was censored during the war time, during World War II. Um, the letters would be opened up, and somebody would read them to find out if there was any military secrets that were being divulged that would have an adverse effect to the outcome of the war. You can learn your family history from collecting old mail. This is from my own personal family. This was a, a great uncle of mine who sent this to my, this little postcard to my mother when she was two years old. He was in World War I, and it's addressed to her. Instead of her first name, he put down kiddo, because he called her kiddo. And he asks if she had planted a victory garden, because people, food, there was a food shortage at the time, and people were planting gardens in their yards. 
And uh, so I found that in my mother's attic, and that got me started on collecting military postal history. And so I collected this one, which was uh, from a prisoner of war during World War II. It's not just one hobby. Stamp collecting isn't just one hobby. It's a whole bunch of hobbies. Who likes teddy bears? Okay, me too. I collect teddy bears, so I also collect teddy bear stamps. Who likes old cars? Okay, you can have old cars on stamps and seashells and flags. Anything you can think of has been on a stamp, no matter what it is that you like, has been on a stamp. Look at all of those. Cool? Who likes Santa Claus? <laughs> this looks like my cat named Teddy. I, I named my cat Teddy because I like teddy bears. And that looks like my cat Teddy right there. Baseball, I saw a baseball fan way over there in the back. Yeah, butterflies, dogs, rocks, rock and roll singers like Elvis Presley, flowers. Everything that you can think of has been on a stamp. You can collect the stamps that you like, and when you're all finished collecting those stamps that you like, you will have A, B, C's, a beautiful collection. Okay, so now we're going to have a beautiful collection. Okay, we're ready to start the, with the stamp part. So if I can just have the museum volunteers to go over and grab the trays to make sure the table gets a couple. In the meantime, I'm going to pick out some songs since we're not using Need some help with distribution? Oh, oh, oh. okay. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Stamps. All right. Has everybody got some? Looks like everybody's got some. So what are we looking for, dinosaurs? Oh, he's really looking for a train. Train. Trains are his oh, favorite right. thing. But he likes dinosaurs, too. Trains. Yeah, I bet there's lots of trains in here. So we'll start looking for trains over here. What are we looking for over here? Uh, we're not sure what we're looking for. Maybe some flowers? Maybe. Oh, you found one. Okay. Well, let's find out. Okay. You want to, you want to see how to put it on? We'll use one of these. All right. Now, let me let, let me show you with Here. with one like this. There you go. Pull one. Oh, that one's got Here. a tab on. Do this one. You want to do that one? Yeah, we'll try that. All right. All right let's watch. Okay. So okay, you find the top of the stamp. Now there's the top. Oh. Yeah. Now you've got there this little go. piece of paper like this, <laughs> and the shiny side has sticky stuff on it. it has gum on it. And there's a short side and a long side. You see how it's folded? Okay, the short side, you just lick it a little bit and you stick it on the top of the stamp like that. Okay, and then you fold it back down and then you lick a little bit just at the very tip of the end of that. And then you put it on your page wherever you want it. You put it right in there because it fits in that box. Now, when you're finished, you should be able to pop it up and down like that. Now you try one. All right, let's see if you can find one. Okay, so remember the shiny side goes up, right? So look, do it like this. Here's your top part. Okay, so we're gonna let's find the shiny side first. Okay, so you're gonna lick that side. That's it. And then put it right on. Add a girl. Okay. Perfect. And then you're going to lick just a little bit of it and flip it over and then stick it in a square. I think that you got a train there. You should pay attention to that. Perfect. Hey, great job. Well done. That was very good. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. 
Hey, give me five on that. Can you say thank you? Thank you. You're welcome. You did great. Hey, that was a very good job. Oh, what's that one? Okay. You're welcome. How are we doing down here? Okay, we went, we want to stick them down on the page now, right? Yes. Okay, so you want me to show you how to do that? I'm oh, sure. Okay. I'll show you one and then you can do the rest of them. Okay. All right? So I'll do this one. Okay. Okay. This is the stamp. This is the top of the stamp. So you always have to locate the top of the stamp. So then you turn it over. Now remember the top of the stamp is right here. Wait a So then you take one of these things. They're called a hinge. Okay. And there's the shiny side, it always has to be, that's the glue, that's where the sticky stuff oh, is, okay? Yeah. Now, it's folded, it's already folded for you, and there's a long side and a short side. Okay. So the short side goes on the top of the stamp, so you lick that just a little bit, okay. doesn't take much, and then you put it on the top of the stamp. Okay. Okay, so then it looks like this. Okay. All right? Then you've got this long piece, and you just lick the very end of that like that and then you put it down oh, just nice. like that now the reason why it's called a hinge is because when you've done it right oh look at that. Like that oh that's great okay and it won't it cool. won't get stuck down oh okay that's great look at that thank you yeah oh, cool right. huh yeah let me see what you pay oh, the course is very nice Keep it for years. I have a whole bunch to look through. Josh and I were just here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this one looks like it's bent over, but I think. Oh no, it's cut. It's cut. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's cool. That is a cool <laughs> stamp. That is a cool stamp. Oh, there's one with dancing on it. And you see the postmark? You see the postmark? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, 1979. Yes. Okay, that was called a mount, and you can use that for your stamps too. And I'll show you how that works. Let's pull a stamp. Do you have one right there? All right. Now let's see if that's going to fit in this mount. No, it's going to be too big. So we'll use we'll use this one. Okay, we'll use this one. This one is a little bit different than the other one, and the stamp just goes right in there, like that. And then you can lick the back of it right at the top and put it down. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. So that way you can take it in and out. And that's move right. It okay, you really don't need to lick the whole back of it, but that's okay. It's not going to go anywhere for sure. That wasn't, she was looking for that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well done. Nice. Well done. Very nice, huh? Oh, wow. That's an example of somebody who chooses one color. Red, that is very good. You can do it by country. Let's see what we got. How are we doing over here? Okay, did anybody show you how to use a hinge? How to put, okay, very good. There, there we go. There's those stamps that I were, was telling everybody about. The, the presidents. You can learn it. Here's the Jefferson one, the three. He was the third president. Nine. There you go. And there's the fifth president, James Monroe. And the sixth president. Yeah, and here's ten. Here's seven. If you're looking for seven. There's six. And there's a lot of them in here. Here's five. Yeah. A lot of them in there. For somebody who wants to do the presidents. Re remember when I was talking about the presidents? There's the stamps with the presidents on them. Three. Here's the third president is Jefferson. And I, like the, I like the blue one. The, the five is Monroe and six is. Is that one? No, that's that's not the same series. But this right. is this is President Roosevelt. Oh, okay. And he's actually working on his stamp collection. He was. Oh. He isn't that funny. You want that one? Yeah. 
Remember when I was talking about the president's stamps? There they are, right there. There's the three cent one with Jefferson on, and the five cent, six, the sixth president, the tenth president. There they are. That's what they look like. You see? So that's how you can learn the president. They just started a different series, yeah. Yeah, they started a, a different series. Sorry? What series? Oh, okay. The, this president series. Okay, these are stamp mounts. Okay, and you can put a stamp in here. Instead of hinging them using these, you can use one of these. And they, what that does is it works like this. You, and you put your stamp in. This, these are a little bit too small for most of these stamps, but I'll show you one like will go sideways instead of up and down. It goes like that. And then you lick it and put it in place. So you want to try one? Okay, there you go. And these are, oh, I'm sorry. These are pretty much the same, but they only have one, one uh, um, meld down there. It's only sealed on one side. And you put it in like that. And then you lick it, and there it goes. There you go. I'm assuming these are theirs to keep. Yes, they are. They are yours to keep. There's triangles. Two triangles together. Really? Wow! Thank you for coming. These are pretty. Oh, this. That's the theme. Pretty. You're not supposed to lick the stamp, but you're supposed to lick the stamp. Oh, the mouth. And then you can lick just a little bit here on the top of it and put it down. That was from Venezuela. So, you know, when you raise that mouth, you're going to make it. Those are great. You're doing a great job. Remember when I was talking about the president stamps? There they are. There's some of them. Okay, there's there's Jefferson. And this is Monroe. There's six. There's ten. That's what they look like in person. No, I, I know the United States is known for issuing a lot of different commemoratives. This uh -huh. year. What other countries have you know a similar uh, who, are, who issue a lot of commemorations? Uh, Australia does, um, Great Britain, Germany. Uh, most countries do issue a lot of commemoratives, yeah, yeah. The United States issues fewer than a whole lot of countries. Even Canada issues a lot of commemorative stamps. Yeah. Where do you get a lot of those um, stamps? Used to be, we would say, off of your, your mail that comes in, but nobody gets mail anymore. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, you can buy stamps like this very inexpensively on eBay. There's a stamp show going on right now today in, um, out in Tyson Corner at the Hilton Hotel in, in Tyson Corner. Bill Gross is a famous collector. He is a very famous collector, yes. he dedicate or make a large donation? He made a large donation to this museum, and they're going to open up the William H. Gross Philatelic Gallery okay. in about two years' time. Yeah, it's going to be upstairs. Would that be his collection? No. It would be stuff that yeah, the, the museum has. Mm -hmm. uh, he's selling most of his collection. All, it seems like he's selling a good deal of his collection, and then he donates the money to charity. Wow. Namibia in Africa. So are you visiting from out of town or do you live around here? No, we live out of Gatesburg. Mm. Oh, there's lots of pretty stuff here. Here's a soldier. Who wants a soldier? St. Lucia in the Caribbean. There's Queen Elizabeth. Greece. 
Michael, look at this side. Take a look at that. What are we looking for? Anything special? Uh, he's looking for countries and he's looking for cartoons. <laughs> cartoons, all right. Countries and cartoons. Here's a squirrel. How about a squirrel? Do we want a squirrel? You want a squirrel? There you go. There's a squirrel for you. See, these are the, the president stamps that I showed on the slide. There's, there's the one that I showed. That's Jefferson. And there's Monroe. There's a bunch of them. There's 35. For 35 different president stamps like that. Antigua. Oh, you're finding lots of cartoons. Well done. <laughs> well done. You got a great eye. There's a cool looking bird. How's everybody doing here? You finding lots of things? These are the president stamps that I showed before. That's what they look like. I think that's what she's working on. We've got all those. In okay, there. you got all of those? You got the 10 cent one? You got the six? You got the five? You got the three? Yep. You got them all? You got them all? Okie dokie, you're doing well then. See the energy level when you bring a stamp yeah, out. Yeah. So if we set up and we get some donations from the viewers or whatever, and we set up a little package for those kids as they leave the gallery. Right. But the other thing is, I'm thinking of, of you know personalized posters. Yes. You take the picture upstairs, you come down here in the museum shop, and you get the final cut. Yeah, that would work. I really like it. If you can get the parents, you can get the kids. Because the, the kids will do what the parents do, you know. But once you, you start them working, change, change. Yeah. Okay. How are we doing? Well, you keep yours for you. Yeah. If you see any children, give you're them having fun. fun? Yeah. That's the whole idea. Or butterflies. I can't decide. All right. Remember when I was showing before the presidents? Yeah, you found some. Yeah, I found some. Would you like to see? Sure. All right. Yep. There's the three cent Jefferson. Yeah. Okay. There's Jefferson. There's five cent Monroe. There's the sixth president. The tenth president. Okay, are you, you going to be looking for presidents? You want these? You want these presidents? These are the ones that I showed before. There, you can have those presidents. All right, well, that's, that's good. I got a collection of queens. You got a collection of queens? Okay. There's another queen right here. You got that queen? 
you want the present, then the presidents are yours. Oh, it's a great hobby. It's a great hobby to pick up again. Yep. So you're gonna. I remember, you know, ordering them from the, the catalogs. You order them. Oh yeah. And then waiting for them to come. It was so exciting. Yep. You're finding, oh, you're having a wonderful collection there. It's turning out great. We got a little stickiness going on. Uh, I, can under okay. I can understand that. There you go, sweetheart. That comes Thank off like that. Thank you. But I think we're getting the hang of it. Good. Once you start looking at certain stamps, it starts giving you different ideas Absolutely. to come up with different. Absolutely. Oh, Josh, there's one for you. I don't know if it's the Hindenburg, but it's a. It's definitely it's a, Zem a Zeppelin. Zeppelin for sure, yeah. For sure, yeah. That looks kind of scary. Oh yeah. Ooh, Daddy, I need help. Look, a pink stamp. Ooh, can I have one? Sure. Daddy, can I have help? Yes. Ooh, a swimmer stamp. Ooh, a swimmer. That's very nice. A hundred. As you said, multiple collections within a collection. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's see what we're going to do here, sweet thing. How are we doing down here? Great. We are doing good. You having fun? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. It is. And seeing all the different things. And you know, and trying to figure out what the stamps mean, what they say. I mean, this is from Yemen, and it's... The, the country's name is written in, in English, but look at all of those characters. I've noticed that. On some of their and it's just gorgeous, you know? The, the stamps, you just look at them and they're just gorgeous. This is from a little island in the South Atlantic. No, just fun. We're looking through. Look at these. These are really old, 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 old Russian, Russian stamps. Oh, wow. And you see... Most stamps have perforations around them. Right. So you tear them from them. These were called roulette. They, they didn't perforate them, but they put oh. little slits in the paper so that they would separate from one another easily. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of rouletting. You know, we're having so much fun just going through and looking at them. She found what? what? I think there's one in here, too, of an Olympic. Um, Let me see. I saw one in here, too, of that. So what you see? She's just picking out one she likes. Remember, it can be anything. Is this guy on the Stoke in the cold? There's really interesting stamps in this, this bunch. This was issued by Germany uh, around 1920, 1921. My son was looking at that one. Yeah, and, and they started, the, the, the denomination started to get higher and higher and higher because they, by 1923 they were in hyperinflation okay. and people were getting paid twice a day so that they could go out in their lunch hour oh. with wheelbarrows full of money and buy bread for themselves at home. It got to the point where in, in the middle of winter uh, the money was just absolutely worthless so they would burn it for, for heat and warmth. Oh my word! And so this is the very beginning of the hyperinflation period. There's, an, there's another German stamp right here. Yeah, this is this is just at the beginning of the hyperinflation. You can see we go from uh, oh 10 my. marks to 400, to 400 marks. Thank it you, went to um, 20 billion. No, it did. Oh my goodness! It cost 20 billion marks to mail a letter. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, what is the Statue of Liberty. Oh God! 